Hello, everyone. You guessed it. It's Thursday. This will be the last, second to last, classical Thursday. There will be. I understand. I've been kind of slacking off on Thursdays. I'm very sorry, everybody. Let me move you a little bit so you don't see entirely of what. Yeah. That's not mine. Don't, don't ask questions that you don't want to answer to. Anyways. You guys know what's coming. We are here. Finally, it has been a long way to talk about Franz Joseph Hayden. Let's just take a little bit in here. And absorb what we're experiencing today. Okay, that was Joseph Hayden's Symphony Number no. Six in D. I do believe D major. It makes you feel all warm and happy, and like you're galloping on a horse through the fucking meadows in the bright fucking morning. Anyways, let's talk a little about a little bit about the genius behind the Symphony Number no. Six. Joseph Hayden. He was born. In March, 31st of March, night, 1732, man was a genius. Let's just say that. Uh, he taught Ludwig von Beethoven, was the teacher, and obviously Ludwig von Beethoven became the prodigal son, or he wouldn't be considered prodigal, prodigal pupil of Joseph Hayden. Uh, Franz is a prefix on top of his name. Uh, I do believe it is a German prefix for him. Uh, it's kind of like Mr. or Mrs. Or, or Governor or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but he passed away the 31st of May, 1809. Uh... He was born in Rora, Austria. Uh, it's it was a village that stood on the border of Hungary, Hungary, and Austria. Uh, his father was Matthias Hayden. Uh, uh, doesn't. Talk about his uh, mother. His father was a matriarch. Uh, he freelanced and I don't know, Cable Lewis? I don't know where that is. Um, I'm trying to find a number here of how many composers he... It doesn't really give me a, a number of... Of his works.
But, in the words of James Webster, uh, he excelled in every musical genre. He is familiarly known as the father of the symphony and could be, with greater justice, be thus regarded for the string quartet. No other composure approaches his combination of protection productivity, quality, and historical importance in these genres. Thank you, James Webster. I totally took that from Wikipedia, but thank you anyways. Uh, his musical influences were very different. Very different. Let, let's, hold on, let me uh, bring up the String quartet, he does. String quartet in C major, op six, 76, number three, second movement. Probably one of his best pieces in my mind, personally. Personally. Which, number three was known as the Emperor. It's only eight minutes long. If you guys want to go experience yourself, go, go, Joseph Hayden. Hayden is spelled H-A-Y-D-N. String quartet in C major, op 60, 76, sorry my dyslexia kicked in, number three, second movement. Now this is done with violin, viola, and a cello. Now this man knows how to compose, knew how to compose very happy, upbeat plays, or symphonies of pieces of music that made you feel like you could smile, like everything was brighter when you listen to this music. You close your eyes and see a meadow full of green grass, flowers blooming everywhere, and the sun's nice and bright, and it's not too hot, not too cold, it's just right, the breeze breathes a little bit on you, breathes on you, mind you, not blows or gusts at you, it breathes just very, very lightly and softly, just kind of, now, I'm getting very into this right now. I'm really sorry, guys. But you guys have to understand, this This is something I have been looking for in my own music I have been writing. Something that gives you that sensation. That, you know, gives you the visual effect of the music constructing art. Something that makes you see visually in your mind what the piece is trying to bring into light for you. And he was very good at this. He was excellent at it. Most of his pieces are done in major. On the other hand, you have Ludwig von Beethoven who does a lot of his music in minor. Which... Ludwig van Beethoven was famous for this. He did a lot of pieces in minor. Now, you, you have to understand that in order to start a piece in minor, it creates that, that dark feeling like it's not as happy or bubbly. You could, you could possibly put uh, a war piece to minor. You can put 
a sad funeral piece in minor. You could put it's all these things in minor set up a way that in your mind it puts you in this state of kind of down a little bit. You're not as upbeat or happy. You don't see you got clouds in the meadow now instead of the sun shining bright. The wind's blowing really hard and blowing you the fuck around and you're like, oh god damn it, leave me alone, wind. Flowers are decaying and wilting next to you and shit. So, the transition of between master and pupil was very knit, knit uh, tightly knit. They were like two weld oil machines because when you put major and minor together, you have one well placed piece fixed together. You have this utmost incredible, my arm itched, incredible piece. So if you were to take Hayden's minor major and Ludwig's made minor blah, blah blah Hayden's minor major blah Hayden's major and Ludwig's minor put them together you have something that works in a way that they worked well off each other that is that's why I believe that when Hayden taught Ludwig he taught him in minor it's not documented that Ludwig was taught Ludwig was taught in minor by a major which was Joseph Hayden now to sit down and actually understand these people we have to look into their personality, their structure, their characteristics, their 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 influence behind them. Let me read a little section here um, of what exactly drove Joseph Hayden to play music. His father, Matthias Hayden, was an enthusiast of folk musician. He was a folk musician himself. Who, during the journeyman period of his career, had taught himself to play the harp. According to Hayden's later remin reminiscence, his childhood family was extremely musical. These people that have excelled so greatly, that have passed away and left us this legacy of their own incredible genius, have always followed a pattern of having a musical background. Ludwig's father and mother both had musical backgrounds. Same with Wolfgang Amadeus. Both of his parents had musical backgrounds. They came from great composure or musical families that played music or played instruments or wrote music. Where in Wolfgang Amadeus's case, his father was a composer. Not as great as Wolfgang Amadeus. I'm sorry, Wolfgang Amadeus's father. But... You you didn't hit the same pinnacle that Wolfgang Amadeus hit. He hit a, a an incredible stride during his life that surpassed his own father's. <sighs> Hayden's parents had noticed that their son was musically gifted and knew that in Raha, Ro, Ro, Ra, Ro, Ra? The, that place in Austria, he would have no chance to obtain serious musical training. It was for this reason that around the time Hayden turned six, they accepted 
a proposal from their relative, Johann Matthias Frank, the schoolmaster and a schoolmaster and choirmaster in Hindenburg, that Hayden would become apprenticed by Frank in his house to train as a musician. Hayden therefore went to went off with Frank to Hannenberg, 12 kilometers, 7.5 miles away. He never again lived with his parents. Life with Frank in the Frank household was not easy for Hayden. Whoever remembered who later remembered being frequently hungry and humiliated by the filthy state of his clothing. He began his musical training there. He could soon play by harpus chord or violin. The people of Hunnenberg heard him sing treble parts in the church choir. So he had a musical influence already set into his mind. He could sing treble, he could play the harper chord, and he could play the violin already. Not only that, but whereas his father and his mother have noticed he had a musical influence already in his life from his father playing the harp for folk. <laughs> oh, I'm really sorry, everybody. For folk music. Now... This had turned him into the man he was for musical inclinations, which means he took that negative in his life and turned it to a positive in his music, which means he took that depressing childhood he had and he remembered. He turned it into beautiful, up, great, enjoyable Bright music with his major pieces. Now, I'm going on 20 minutes here. I'm going to have to cut the video here, everybody. Thank you for joining me. <gasps> uh, for the second to last. Classical Thursday. I hope everybody enjoyed this series. As much as I have talking about these great and powerful Legacies that these musicians have left behind for us. They were incredible. And to learn some of the things that I have learned that I have not been able to cover in my videos, mind you. I have become to understand a greater appreciation towards the music that we listen to today. Yet, we have nullified. We have killed the musical inspiration and the music itself. We have butchered it and turned it into what we have now. But, in any case, y'all know the, the routine. Go to my channel, watch some of my other videos. Watch some of my other Classical Thursday videos where I talk about Ludwig van Beethoven. I talk about Wolfgang Amadeus, and now today we have Franz Joseph Hayden. Thank you, Franz Joseph Hayden, for writing this music and allowing me to discuss it with my people. You guys are my people, my fans, my friends, my family, and if you come watch my channel, you must be a fan. So, thank you everybody for watching. If today is your birthday, I hope you have an amazing day, an excellent, beautiful, wonderful birthday. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video, and I will see you later.